Hello, well today I want to talk to you about a receivership case. And the astute amongst you will think, why receivership when we consider the Enterprise Act 2002 and its effects on administration and administrative receivership? What, of course, Professor McCormack has called a transmutation when we consider Schedule B1 paragraph 3 and the purposes of administration but we're going to consider this what we might now call old case on administrative receivership and in particular the duties that are owed by this species of office holder a receiver because it's interesting in its own right is the case of Medforth and Blake and others, 1999, square brackets, three weekly law reports at page 922. So it's interesting in its own sense for being a, a good exposition of the duties that are owed by, or were owed by, the administrative receivers in the case. It's also interesting because it involves pigs. Uh, and pigs that are fed using feed that perhaps could have been cheaper. And why were they even being fed by office holders, insolvency practitioners? Well, that's because perhaps this case is an example of a trading receivership. So this is where we see perhaps an instance of a so-called selfish remedy, administrative receivership, being used to facilitate a better value than would occur if this farm had gone into some other insolvency procedure namely liquidation so the facts then briefly stated are this receivers were appointed to carry on a pig farm uh, in 1984 and whilst at that pig farm those receivers it was alleged failed to obtain discounts on pig feed Hitherto, Medforth, the farmer, had obtained discounts uh, to the tune of 10 to 15 percent. So for the period of this uh, receivership, which ran for approximately four years, the receivers did not obtain discounts of some 200,000 pounds, which, as we know, is a rather substantial figure. So the question before the court at first instance was whether or not the receivers owed the plaintiff a duty of care when conducting the business. And at first instance it was held that the receivers did owe a duty of care and that was upheld on appeal when the case was appealed unsuccessfully before Sir Richard Scott who was then Vice-Chancellor and Lord Justices Swinton, Thomas and Tucky in the Court of Appeal. They held that the receiver owed duties to the mortgagor and anyone else with an interest in the equity of redemption, and that equity imposed but was not restricted to a duty of good faith. So we might say at this point then that those receivers owed a duty of good faith to the mortgagor, as I've said, uh, and, uh, of course, anyone else who is interested in that equity of redemption. But importantly for us, when we're thinking about that receiver, what we must have in mind is this, that their primary duty is, however, to bring about a situation in which interest on secured debt could be paid and the debt itself could be repaid. So we have this primary obligation with this good faith, what I might say, aside, which uh, must or is prevalent or extant in the background of that receiver's considerations. So we'd say then that the receiver should act with perhaps due diligence. Whereas up to, of course, this case, it could be argued that there wasn't such a duty in the same sense that there is for directors in relation to section, what is now section 174, 
of the Companies Act or hitherto had been in a certain context, Section 214 of the Insolvency Act 1986, in relation to directors and their activity in the Twilight Zone. So have a look at the case and think about the scope of that duty that our receivers owe. When you're looking at the case, do think of secondary sources. Dr Frisbee's excellent making a silk's purse out of a sow's ear article in the Modern Law Review is worth looking at. Is of course, as is of course, her book, her co-authored book, the 19th edition of Kerr and Hunter on Receivers and Administrators, which delves deeply into these issues. So have a look at those two primary sources when you think about Medforth and Blake. Until our next case summary, I will then bid you goodbye.